known better. Um, thank you uh, for being here. Um, I hope you have been teased by the title of my presentation, which has very little to do with the content of the presentation. It was just a, what I suppose it was an enticing title for, for something really, really boring as protocol uh, or legal uh, analysis of, of protocol. That wasn't me? Hopefully. So, ah, oh, yeah. This doesn't work, which is not good. No, 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 that's no, fine. Okay, let's start with the, the very basics. I'm sorry if I'm saying things that you all know or you are familiar with, but I'm starting from the very basics. So my learned friend will uh, dig deeper into the real stuff. But so we have all everybody on the same on the same line. So openness, what is openness? Uh, also in protocols, openness is literally uh, from the dictionary, the contrary of being closed. So uh, this is actually from, from the dictionary. It's a free from limitation or boundaries or restrictions. In protocols or interfaces or API, from a legal perspective, of course, not from a technical perspective, these restrictions, boundaries, impairments uh, come from mostly one and one only uh, source, which is uh, intellectual property, something that locks things in. Uh, but when we speak, uh, think about intellectual property, we are using a collective name for a variety of ma many different things to a point that I personally tend to avoid the terms intellectual property because it, it, does, it just speaks little about uh, what, we're, uh, what actually the, the object of our analysis is. We have so many different things um, which can be relevant that uh, putting everything into one name is really not, 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 not a good idea. And when people say, says, um, uh, well, well, I shouldn't have any problem. I, I've bought the intellectual property on this thing. Uh, actually, they are missing the, 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 the target. Because instead of thinking of uh, to, uh, trademarks, uh, copyright, patents, as a single thing, we should think uh, about a, a multiple, uh, a plethora of locks, which uh, must be unlocked one by one in order to be clear. If you are licensed 120 uh, or 1,200 patents from MPLA and you have a company approaching you and say, oh, good, but we have like 10 more patents you have to license from us, you're not home free. And, if, uh, and the same is for all the, the, the intellectual property uh, puzzle. So the same is for protocols. And I have listed the, the, the very few things that are relevant and then can restrict uh, protocols and interfaces. I hope you are familiar with uh, all of them, but just browse through. Uh, the first is copyright, of course. Uh, protocols, interfaces uh, always are software or are descriptive of something, so they use natural language or programming language, which all are subject to copyright. You know that, of course, copyright doesn't doesn't protect the uh, the idea behind uh, the software or the literary uh, um, expression, but they uh, cover the exact expression of of, uh, of the concept. Uh, we also have copyrights, uh, sorry, database rights, which can be relevant in theory because uh, we have a has been raised as, a, as an issue in many cases. Uh, we have uh, the um, uh, as a dictionary, a set of terms, a collection of items which um, collectively can, in theory, can fall uh, within the protection of database rights. We have secret. This is uh, a, uh, a big thing, of course, because protocols can be fully released, part, partially released, and of course, uh, many people in, in the room are familiar with uh, the, the entire litigation. Uh, which uh, put uh, the European Commission and first the, the Department of Justice against Microsoft. That was almost entirely uh, about 
a secret extension to public protocols and the failure to properly reveal them so that the uh, remedy was to uh, provide complete and timely specification, complete and timely description of the protocols. So secret plays a big role. Patents, of course. Patents are the problem of, uh, of many things in, 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 uh, in, uh, in IT nowadays. Be it uh, uh, media content, uh, video streaming, audio streaming, uh, internet protocols, API, you name it, you have it. So this is the, the, giant, the giant issue. And of course, something which is not related, uh, not necessarily uh, related to uh, in, uh, so-called intellectual property, which is standards. Uh, but it's not the standard, I mean the formal standard or the euro standard that is uh, the problem per se, but the fact that so, uh, pet, uh, standards dictate the way you have to do things, so you cannot escape unless you are not complying with the standard, and the interaction between the standards and patents. So, and for protocols, uh, communication protocols, uh, multimedia protocols, uh, API, cloud, you have uh, more and more form, uh, standard formation, and so you have ways to do things which interacts with patents. And then, lastly, something which is totally not intellectual property, which is comp uh, competition. Of course, uh, competition brings ob obligation. Once you become dominant, or once you agree with other people to do certain things in a way, like AKA standardizing, you face you are faced with competition problem. So when, when you set a patent pool, for instance, there is a huge competition problem because you are agreeing on selling uh, patents uh, on a single uh, agreement, putting many competitors together. And these brings things that my, my friends will discuss, like brand uh, promises, uh, brand licensing, and so, and so on and so forth. So, these are, in my reading, the main um, uh, encumbrances which are relevant to, to standards. But, um, is it true? Is it a complete list and all items in this list are, are really relevant? Or should they be really relevant, in a, in a, strictly speaking, from, from a legal point of view? Mm, not quite, not all. Um, Let's go back to the, uh, to the list. So is copyright relevant as an encumbrance to protocol? I think eventually it is not, with some question mark. Of course, any time you uh, speak to a lawyer and ask a yes, no question, you will never get neither a yes nor a no. So you will have a, it depends. So, um, as I said, copyright covers the exact expression uh, with one big exception. When there is a technical constraint, an external constraint, and there is only one way of saying something or making a, uh, then you are not free of expressing yourself or, your, or writing your algorithm as you please, but you're forced. And any time you're forced to do things in a certain way, because of you have, for instance, you have to interface uh, with a protocol, then you should you you are uh, you are outside the realm of copyright. This has been uh, put into the legislation of the European Union. Union, it's formalized uh, in the software directive, and it goes by the name of the interoperability. Okay, uh, so. Uh, Anytime you need uh, to uh, be interoperable, the interfaces are outside of the realm of co copyright because they are considered external constraints. Uh, it's difficult to define what an interface is. Uh, as, as pornography, uh, uh, everybody uh, is as uh, uh, difficult to say what pornography is, but almost everybody can recognize pornography when they see it. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not just <laughs> making an equivalent to, 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 to pornography in, in, in copyright, but in a way it is. So in Europe, we, um, 
the exact boundaries of what is the interoperability exception vis-a-vis -vis interfaces has been long, uh, uh, very, very long debated. Uh, eventually, we had the decision, uh, which has been between um, SAS Institute, which is uh, making a statistics software and war programming language. And there, there has been a case in uh, ECJ court, the Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court of, of Europe, which is the European Court of Justice. And uh, the, an English um, court asked the European Court of Justice their interpretation of to which extent a, an interface can be protected under copyright uh, so that another company cannot just make a plug-in replacement to something which interfaces. So you have two different pieces of software. One is a platform. One uses the API, uh, the file format. And a competing company want, wanting to replace uh, the underlying platform, replacing the entire API, and being able to replug the same program and make it work as it, if it works with the, the, the old one. It's the same thing that if you know Wine, uh, it's the re-implementation uh, of the Windows 32 API. Same thing. And the court, despite many thought, would never go to this full length of saying, uh, this is 100%, even though you are repli uh, replicating all the, uh, the dictionary, all the syntax, uh, all, the, all the, the variables, uh, uh, you are copying large chunks of software uh, because to be interoperable, you, you end up with repeating the same thing at the end of the day. So they will never go to that length. Uh, it was surprising when um, first, uh, the, the, the Advocate General said, no, no, this is 100% interoperability. This has nothing to do with copyright as long as you don't reverse engineer the source code. Anytime you just look at the interface repl and replicate it, it's replicating the idea, it's not copying the software. As long as you don't, touch, you don't touch the original software. And the same with the file format, the same with the programming language, which was a big question mark because programming language is, is not an interface, uh, not technically, but it's, it's a language. And these people have re-implemented the same language by reading the, the language and reusing it, the same programming language that uh, SAS. Uh, so I am putting in a red face. Uh, so this is, cannot be used. So copyright should be outside our, our consideration. Oh, because of that. All right. So, but this, uh, this very proposition uh, has been challenged in the States. You know the litigation between Oracle and Google? The same, uh, almost the same identical uh, uh, issue. Google having redone the same uh, set of um, API and, and libraries uh, that Java uses, that one went to court. Um, the court, uh, the first, uh, the, 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 the district court said, uh, that's fine, that's interoperability, that's fair use, uh, it's in a certain constraint, Google did right. Uh, um, but the Court of Appeals uh, had a different, uh, different uh, approach and they say, mm, yeah, that's too much, they have copied too much. And so this, uh, this is within, within the copyright provisions, so no. Uh, Google is not clear. Google has trespassed on Oracle. Nowadays, uh, today, there is a pending motion for certiorari, meaning that uh, Google is asking the Supreme Court to have a say on that. Somebody is opposing to this request and saying that this is not a binding precedent. The European is a binding precedent to press, precedent, how do you say? Precedent to, to all the courts. So all, this is the law in Europe and the same it's not for the Court of Appeal because this, some, some say this is not a binding precedent, precedent to uh, the other courts. So that's, that's difficult. But there is a big question mark in the States. And we have covered a, a, big, a big chunk of our analysis. Database rights, 
database rights are not relevant at all, despite there is a huge collection of item things. Uh, you know, the, the threshold for database protection, which is a European thing, is very low. So, um, uh, but at least you have to show a relevant investment in collecting, analyzing, uh, making sure that everything is fine, and, uh, and presenting the information. Um, maybe there is a huge investment in making a, a protocol or an API and studying a language, making the platform grow. Nobody, nobody is challenged with that, but that was not per se directed to creating a database. So this is outside the scope of database and database should not be called in. Not even if the person is uh, using the same uh, collection of items copied one by one into the other part. Because that's the only way you, have to, you can do it. But before that, it's not a fair use, uh, a fair use uh, issue, it is uh, there is no database protection because you have not put in the relevant investment into creating the database. This is a byproduct of a very expensive, very valuable activity, but not related, not directed to it. This is in, in, a, a, very, a very clear uh, legis uh, legislation in, in Europe. Secret. Uh, secret is question mark because secret, um, it's, uh, it's not intellectual property. Strictly speaking, secret is a national base. It's a commercial uh, unfair competition or it's, it's embedded in copyright by the uh, um, prohibition to, uh, uh, decom to decompilation. This is the only secret which is um, into an intellectual property um, provision. But uh, secret can, can, can be effective in, in protecting uh, but um, there is there's an, oppos an opposite right, the right to see what the secret is, uh, the secret, uh, um, the secret uh, information is. So we have heard this morning, uh, if, if you were at the uh, Samba presentation, uh, how they, they reverse engineer the SMB protocols by looking what flew through the wires. So this is something uh, you can do to discover secrets. So uh, although the secret is protected even by criminal provision and decompiling software is a criminal, criminal offense in many countries in Europe, in Italy for sure, uh, you have a right to try and discover the secret because you can observe, use the software, observe what the software does and try to find the way it works and replicate that in, even though it's secret. But there is a, an, a further exception, DRM. Uh, if the software is under uh, as, as technical protection so that you, you're, uh, you, cannot, uh, uh, you, you're not, you cannot circumvent uh, this protection, even though in theory you would have the right to, 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 do, that, to do that activity. So if there you have uh, uh, copy protection and you have a right to make a copy, like a backup copy, you can do, you're legally permitted to that and it's, it's illegal to put in a contract that you are, have not this, this right. This is a, a, a statutory right unavoidable. But if you put a DRM onto it, a copy protection, circumventing that would be an offense. And the court, EC Court of Justice said, this is, uh, although you have this right, you cannot use it, basically. So um, with secret, we have uh, different problems. Of course, secret funds to competition obligation, of course. And, 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 and we have the biggest problem, which is patents. Patents, contrary to copyright, patents don't protect the expression, protect the idea behind it. So you have a, if you have a clever thing and you patent it, or you prefer to have uh, everything and patent it, you are protected. Uh, and de facto, uh, removing a patent is next to impossible to many operations, so it, it's not worth it, or it's very complicated. And pre prima facie, or prima facie as the Latins say, um, uh, a patent brings a uh, presumption of being valid. 
So you can go to court and, 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 and ask for an injunction. Um, of course, in many protocols, in many uh, file formats, in many uh, network protocols, in many API, you, you will find a, a patent minefield. So um, uh, opening the protocols will mean uh, demining all of this. And uh, currently, the battle is, is far to be, to be, uh, to be won. Uh, so patents are currently the biggest issue. Even I mentioned before Microsoft. Um, in Microsoft, we have uh, all the secrets removed. Uh, first legally, then Microsoft decided it was a good thing to reveal all uh, the secret protocols, so they are not secret anymore. But, uh, and they offer also a patent, protect, a patent coverage, licensing patents, but unfortunately the patent, uh, the patent uh, pledge they offer is incompatible with uh, free and open source software licensing, at least some of it. So this is still a big, a big issue. Which, ah, right, that's a question, okay. Oh, no problem. Ah, you have a solution. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we have discussed a lot like this, but we, we agreed, we disagreed. So uh, this is the status quo, and this uh, is what we are, uh, our position. Uh, if you have new, new offerings, I, I'm very interested in, in learning. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, so patents are, are huge problems when they uh, are coupled with standards. Because standards are designed, in many fields at least, are designed to be uh, uh, necessarily infringed, uh, or maybe to have some patents of the contributing entities to be necessarily infringed in case the standard is, uh, is adopted. This is the entire ISO um, working group 11, uh, and known as MPEG LA, all, all the, uh, sorry, MPEG, all the MPEG uh, formats, X264, uh, uh, MPEG4, MP2, uh, audio video, MP3, <laughs> have been designed from the inception to include all the technology of the, con of the contributors so that they could license uh, 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 pat their patents uh, when the patent was, um, was, was used. This was the business model of uh, WG11. And this has not changed in, in, in years. So when you put standards, standards, of course, are a constraint. Because uh, standards are a good thing, of course. We all agree. Uh, everything should be standardized so that uh, we have a common way of doing things. But unfortunately, uh, the problem is that with standards come IPR provisions. And we should discriminate between really open standards and not so open standards. There is a lot of confusion with that. And when we speak open standards, we mainly refer to patents. This is the only, the, by and large, the only relevant issue. And then we have competition obligations, which also interact with standards, of course. Oh, uh, not, not only because, um, uh, not only because, um, Uh, standards uh, bring bring uh, um, bring the necessity the, the need to to agree upon by by competing companies, but because sometimes the standards are played in an anti-competitive way. I, I I will not make uh, examples because I, I will be fruit of Microsoft once again, but yeah, uh, uh, actually uh, it has been a, a, a long history of uh, trying to to force some standards to the advantage of one dominant company. This is not just, this is not just in, in software. Uh, telecoms are a, a natural monopoly, of course, and uh, forming a standard in telecoms is, is, has a huge uh, impact on, on uh, obligations. So uh, to make a long story short, we have many, many rights. I'm happy to discuss the, the, the particulars of all, 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 all these. But uh, everything, eventually, at the end of the day, everything boils down to patents. The rest is just complementary, and it's just important, but 
the real problem is here. And then I think that concludes my very brief presentation. Thank you. Uh, over